Dance Your Heart on Fire podcast, episode number 14. Welcome to the Dance Your Heart on Fire podcast, the podcast dedicated to inspiring dancers worldwide whose hearts have been touched by music and dance. The universal language of dance and music is spoken by many of us throughout the world. We want to motivate the dancer in you by sharing stories, insights, and ideas to enhance your journey. Join us now with your host, Charles Ogar. Hello, hello everyone. This is Charles with the Dance Your Heart on Fire podcast. And today we have two special guests. We have Archie and Sizzle with Kizomba Vorth. Um, I watched these guys grow into what they are now with creating Kizomba music here in the United States. Um, they're based out of Houston, Texas, where I used to live. I'm living in Austin now, but it's been great to see their journey thus far. Uh, they've been doing a lot of work, creating really nice albums to create some Kizuma music here from the States. And I wanted to have them on the podcast to kind of share their story and what they do because they have pretty interesting history before Kizuma as well. So without further ado, I wanted to say hello and good morning to Archie and Sizzle. Yo, yo, yo. What's going on, world? It's your boy, Archie. It's your boy, Sizzle. Hello. Hello. Uh. <laughs> That's exactly how it sounds in the songs. How <laughs> <laughs> <Not> people know. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> uh, so even before, so who, how did you guys come up with that? Like Archie, you say it's Archie and the Sizzle says hello. Where did that come from? Even before we get started about your story. Uh, uh, I know that hello is something that I kind of was already doing with my past music. And it's just something I think I just said once and then just like kind of stuck with it. It's funny because I asked him that same question after we was already doing music. And I was just driving one day and I was like, bro, the hello is so dope. Because there's certain things that artists do, like they have their tag, a DJ or artist will have their tag. And it just becomes really, really catchy. And you get like these moments where an artist will get a tag and you're like, bro, that's your tag. That's exactly. Your tag. That's because you have like Rick Ross. He has like the <laughs> right. He has his, his grunt. In that. And then and little so, little John be like, yeah, yeah okay, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so and whenever he was telling, he was like, we was just in this, and it's so funny because a lot of times it's just an accident how people come up with their stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he was just he was like, I was just in the studio and I was behind the mic and I was like. Hello. <laughs> like, Bro, you should say that again. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. assume you're probably just like checking the mic or something. Probably, like that. I think that's what happened. But and then mine is self-explanatory. It's my name. <laughs> exactly. I say it's Archie, so people know who it is. <laughs> I really need you to know. I really need you. Um, <laughs> we'll get started in that. Um, so I really need you. Uh, I really need you to know. It's Archie. Archie. It's Archie. <laughs> <laughs> just so funny. Yeah, it's like I hear it and then I automatically think about the, the lyric in the song that, that comes along after, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, you guys mentioned that you guys were doing music before Kizomba. So, let's go ahead and shine some light on that and let our artists know exactly what you guys did before you started making Kizomba music. Yeah, um, well, for me, we were both solo artists before before we started making uh, Kizomba music. And so for me, I mean, I've been doing music for probably about 10 years. And before Kizomba, I was doing hip hop. And I started doing hip hop, what was it, like uh, 10 years ago. So I've done, I stepped into a booth 10 years ago with with a guy who um, I knew, who was like, yo, bro, you can come in and you can record. I already was a hip hop head and just a music head in general. Um, all different types of music, smooth jazz, uh, hip hop, classical. Uh, I like rock. I even like the heavy rock. Uh, I love all different types of music. And so he was like, you can come in and you can record. And so the first time I stepped into the studio, got behind the mic, did a freestyle. Cause I came from high school freestyle beatboxing around lunch tables and all that, but that was the first time ever recording. I, I remember those days in and, high school with the right? pencils and the pins. With the pencil, <laughs> yes, bro, around the table, and then somebody just jump in after somebody just else just jump in, and it just keeps on going and go for like 30, 45 minutes. People just freestyling. Mm-hmm, um, definitely. And so, uh, but I went to the studio, recorded first my first track, and after that, I was I was in love. And so for me, it was like a it was like. 
went really fast. And like the course of like three years, I had done, I believe something around like five or six different projects um, from, from like two different mixtapes to a full album to an EP um, and then like a bunch of different singles. And so uh, for me, that's how the music before Kizomba music was and then I let Sizzle say his and then we can kind of say how it came together yeah so mine it was it was interesting because I honestly was I, doing music was never on my radar I always loved music you know I was appreciative I was really more into like video games and arts like you know drawing all that kind of stuff I want to be an artist who draws and uh, stuff like that but anyway so a while back I've been doing music for probably 8 to 10 years um, now uh, since I was about 16 um, it all actually started at my church on um, my youth I was like, yo, I want you to change it up one, you know, one week and do like a rap on stage. And I was like, okay, that's dope. <laughs> and so he gave us a bunch of old Dr. Dre beats and we did like a little remix, me and a friend of mine. And then that's where it all started. And from there, uh, we just kind of kept it going. Uh, more opportunities opened itself up and we started performing all over like Texas. Um, we didn't go that far, but I mean, we got out there, we put out a, I can't even, um, maybe three or four projects a few different groups i was with and um it went really well and then uh then i was turned on to kizomba uh what two years ago and, no, it was like three years. And that, like the dance kizomba yeah or like the dance music? kizomba just the dance no nah, man it's been it's been probably like four years for the dance Has it been four years already yeah i think so yeah, yeah, yeah. i think that's about right yeah it's been like four years yeah so we got to turn on to that and I, <clears> I was like and me and archie we had already met each other back when we were both doing hip hop solo and so we knew each other and we found out it all kind of started like with salsa we found out we both danced salsa mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was like yo what you doing here <laughs> <laughs> we ran into each other at, at a salsa spot yeah. on a Saturday night and then, and then not only that it happened again like Two, two or three more weeks in a row after that <laughs> and, then, and then check this so we was going with, with a group of people and then like people do but it's all good they're gonna do their thing <laughs> people start to weed out yep. of who consistently still goes and uh, you know, it, mm -hmm. it was just like too. 10 <laughs> to 5 to me and him and then we was just like you know what let's just carpool yep. so we would just go to the same spot like every weekend mm -hmm. um, Taco for Milagro. a while yeah. Taco <laughs> Milagro yeah, no longer in existence but we was rocking there yeah um, and so we, from there, we we uh, we ran and, and came across a, a, a social um, where we were introduced to Kizomba because we were in the bachata room and we saw a bunch of people in there dancing uh, and then bachata and then all of a sudden it's like Kizomba song, came slow on. jazzy, freaking deep bass, <laughs> tone sounding song came on and we was like, what is this? <laughs> and uh, it had that jazzy feel and so that's what one of the biggest things that attracted us. Uh, and from there, we just started dancing Kizomba. And we still didn't even do any music for Kizomba for a while after that. I think it was probably like two years after we were dancing it because we were dancing it, learning it, growing in it, understanding the culture, growing in the culture and growing in the dance itself. Yep. And then it was funny because music, Kizomba music wasn't really like uh, in our minds. We weren't like, man, we about to make these songs. We about to get out there. We about to be traveling. It was like one day we were like, yo, we should do a song. And mm -hmm. he was like, yeah, let's do it. And then check this. Like six months went by and we still didn't do it. <laughs> it just kind of like went away. And then we found this beat produced by uh, a dope producer out of Germany named JB. Yeah, JB, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll include him in the show notes because, well, I'm pretty sure most of the kids in the world will know who he is, but I'll include his SoundCloud so you guys can hear that as well. Or I'll just include your first song. Yeah, 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 yeah. That piano moods is what the beat was. We mm. found that, and I was like, "Bro, we have to do something to this." And so we uh, <clears throat> we recorded a track uh, with a dope artist named Micah Edwards, who also lives here in Houston. We sent it to JB before we put it out, and we were like, "Hey, bro, you mind if we use this?" We sent him the song, and he was like, "Yes, y'all can use that. I love this. It sounds dope." And so after that, we were just like, "Well, let's just put it out and see what happens." And we put out worth it all, and it just went crazy. People yeah. like fell in love with the song. We got way more attention than we expected from it. And then from there, we were just like, man, let's just do another track and see what happens. And so we put out <laughs> Paradise, and they did the same thing. And then from there, we just kept on going. Um, and we did that track with no with Pilau, No More, and, and exactly. that was history. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. So let's talk a little bit about the vision that you guys have behind the music, because I, th I think it's a little bit deeper than just this get together 
and do a song, I think you guys have a mission behind Worth It All as well. So can you shine a little bit of light on, I guess, the mission aspect of of creating the music as well, especially in Worth It All? Yeah, so uh, the whole mission is, we just call it Kizumba Worth, you know, and of course we have a love for Kizumba, but the whole, you know, when we did Worth It All, we were just thinking, man, like, so a lot of people out there, a lot of women especially, who are just not being respected. You know, we wanted to do something that was kind of like the opposite of what you just you already hear out there, and not only in Kizuma, but in hip hop and, you know, reggaeton, like all these different types of music, they're all kind of degrading women in a way, you know, like they all kind of make them look at as a, an item and not a person. <clears throat> and so we're trying to show women that we want you to know your worth, know that you're, you know, you have a purpose, know that you're more than how you look that you're more than uh, how people see you how more than what people call you like you were born for a purpose you have a destiny in your life and um you shouldn't have to depend on a man all that stuff and so when we did work that all that was a whole idea that is showing you know woman in that song it, you know we were talking more like specific, specifically for like a woman in our life i want you to know that you're worth it all like you're worth everything like i'll do anything for you um and then beyond that um, an even deeper message of that is that you're worth it all in this world like you can go and do anything you can get any job don't let anybody hold you back don't let anybody stand in your way um, it's just really just we want to we really agreed and we're on the same page we really want to encourage women um, when we do consumer music and then even beyond that not just women but even guys like we, we even think about guys when we're doing our songs like I want we just want people to really be encouraged and know that uh, anything is possible in this life if you put your mind to it, and um, and so that's what. Uh, I mean, you can finish that if if you have more to add to it. But that's what our mindset was. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just dope because whenever it comes to like creating music, we love encouraging people. We love encouraging people at the same time with giving them something crazy dope to rock to and to dance to. Um, like, for example, like you got something slow and chill, like worth it all, that's encouraging women. But then you also have something like in your face, like Monster. Yeah. That's like in your face, ghetto zook sounding. And Monster, the concept is really just like, we here. There's no way you can stop us. We're going to do what we know we called to do. We gonna, I'm a monster up in here and, you, and I can't be stopped, you know? And just encouraging people to know that that like whenever you have something that you're striving for whenever you got a goal or something like don't procrastinate don't allow other people that may be that may be speaking uh against you to stop you from doing what you know you're supposed to do you know what i'm saying and so for for us whenever it comes to making music that's really a, a huge thing that is always on the table whenever we're creating stuff that's awesome to hear, and that's one of the reasons that you guys are here on the podcast because it kind of overlaps with the vision of the podcast to kind of encourage and inspire people. You guys are doing music with that, so we'll be sure to include the links to your website and your music and things like that so people can start to check out the songs and hear that inspiring message or inspiring messages, I should say, uh, for different people out there just to kind of put some positivity out in the world, you know? And I'm glad you guys are using the platform through Kizoma to do it because it's definitely starting to grow more and more across the world, which leads me into my next question. Being here in the United States and seeing that most of the producers of Kizoma music were coming from outside of the US. Um, you guys have gotten a chance to travel around to a lot of different places, but um, how did that affect what you guys are doing as far as like the type of music that you're producing as well? And then also <clears throat> who you guys reached out to to start collaborate with? I'll say um, we very like, we were very first starting you know, after Worth It All, after Paradise, and we were really looking for a beat to be created for Kizomba in, in the States. Um, I know personally I was having trouble finding because we were both like reaching out to producers that we've worked for before in mm -hmm. hip-hop and um, I reached out so, to some of my producers who have done hip-hop beats for me in the past and I presented them the concept of Kizumba like what it is and a lot of them were like trying to tell me that's not Kizumba what, is it? what are you talking about Kizumba that's not Kizumba that's reggae, right, reggae I'm like bro, bro you don't know yeah, what you're talking about 
fuck around. Come on, man. Tell me what the music that I'm trying to tell you to make it. What it is? You just heard about this five seconds ago. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I was like, "What are you talking about?" And so I was like, "All right, you know what? You don't get it. Let's just move on." And so uh, one of our artist producers, we uh, reached out to K Drama. K Drama, shout out. He's a hip hop. K Drama on the beats. Yeah, he's a hip hop producer, but he's actually had never made Ikizuma beat before in his life. But we presented him with the idea we presented up a kazumba what we usually do is we send them a few kazumba tracks that we like and be like yo this is yeah, what we like as dope reference you know as, de- you know as reference and like see if you can make something you know not copying it but just like this is what it is this is what we're trying to make mm-hmm. and so he surprised us and uh yeah, and k drama man he's he's dope and let's, i had a lot of confidence in him because he's always been a really creative producer uh and so sending him uh, uh, the idea and the concept um, he came up with some killer stuff he produced the whole the whole, cool EP, airplane, the whole mode. airplane mode except for No More uh, oh really he, yeah he produced the whole thing except for No More p produced No More and K-Drama produced everything else um, and so he did a really uh, like a really good job Wish Inesperado uh, Stay Monster yeah. all the, every track oh, that's him that's awesome and so and then like obviously we love uh, P uh, P Lau man that's a, it's the first he's actually the first producer that we got somebody to make something for us for scratch from scratch because yep. he produced no more mm-hmm. um, as well as singing on it and playing the saxophone on it mm-hmm. um, and he's actually from the states too which I didn't know originally that he was yeah. even from here yeah it's from uh, from and, and so but and then outside of that like we're I think as of right now like we're really striving to work with a lot of other producers as well like we actually we're working on a bunch of stuff and I'm sure we'll get into that later but we've gotten a lot of different tracks from producers who are from Portugal and some that are from Paris uh, and uh, and um, some that are from a couple of other places as well and just because there is a feel you, I, and you, I think you'll know what I'm saying. Like, there's a feel, uh, that authentic, authentic feel. Yeah, yeah, it's like an authentic feel from a producer who actually focuses on producing Kizamba music. Mm-hmm, definitely. And not someone who's like, and not no shot because, like I said, he's dope and he made a bunch of, he made all of the tracks from Airplane Mode. But uh, it's a, it's like a hip hop producer creating. Kizamba music versus a Kizamba producer creating Kizamba music. Uh, and so we're really excited about a lot of the stuff that we got coming up with, with some of the dope producers that we're about to be working with. We're working with, uh, with Flip. Uh, I'll just name a couple. We're working with Flip. We're working with Eri Gomez. Uh, P. Lau's going to produce some more stuff. Ghostface. Um, Ghostface, <laughs> DJ Express. Um, and so we got a lot of we got a lot of cool stuff we're coming. I want to shout out somebody, but he don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm leaving him alone. Okay. No, I'll leave him alone. Okay, no worries, no worries. Um, it's awesome to hear to hear about those upcoming projects. Um, but how many albums have you guys produced so far, and which one has been your favorite? And then we're going to flip the script a little bit and talk about the opportunity that you guys have had to travel to some different places. Because I know you guys have. Perf- Perform at several cool places as well. Yeah, are you talking about music as far as hip hop or music as far as kizomba? Obviously. As far as kizomba. kizomba. Um, like, what's your, your I mean, how many albums and tracks do you guys have produced just far? For kizomba, we have one album. Uh, it's been two years since we've been doing kizomba music, um, and so we have. It's going on two years. Going on two years. Yeah, yeah. and so we have one album uh, with. I believe it has nine songs on it. Yeah, airplane mm-hmm. mode. And airplane mode. And then we have, gosh, we have four, five. We have five singles outside of that as well. And so, uh, those, that's the amount that we have. My favorite one, Aish. It's already out. <laughs> yeah, that's already out. Yeah, it's already yeah. out. Man, I love the Wish remix, bro. <laughs> Golly, I love that track. Yeah, we 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 actually that's the most recent song we put out. Mm-hmm. It's, it's called uh, it's Wish. We, we did Wish on the album. Everybody fell in love with that song. It was probably one of one of the favorites. And then we just decided to do a remix where we got Paulo Mac. Shout out to uh, he's a Zook. Uh, he's a Zook singer. He also mm-hmm. people dance keys on to his music, but he's he focuses on Zook. Um, and uh, and um, we got him to sing uh, the chorus on the remix in Portugal in Portuguese. Um, and so that right now is probably probably my favorite one that we've done. 
I'll let Sizzle say what his is. It's, it's so hard to choose, but I, I, I think that that might be my favorite also. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm, I was really trying not to choose that one. The same one? It's just, is because Wish is one of my favorite. Like even from the beginning, when before it got released, before we knew that it was one of the more popular songs, it was actually we were debating on that. That was one of the ones we were debating being our favorite song. Uh, Wish. Oh yeah, it's true. Especially once Pilaf dropped that saxophone part <laughs> on it, man. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He he he. Yeah, that saxophone added so much. Added so much to it. And so, and then the the remix. I don't know. I feel like. I feel like on the remix we we come at it with a little bit more swag even on our first mm-hmm. and I can see that yeah and like if you listen to the original and then you listen to the remix it's like so a little bit more swag and like in like a cool humble way we kind of feeling ourselves <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm feeling myself a little bit so I'm about to hit this track a little harder than I did the first time right right uh, I like that one a lot because I feel like personally that I, I grew from the first song to the second song because you think about it my first when I first did Wish I was was I I it was before I was married mm-hmm. and then after the Wish remix I was married and so I was singing as a single man versus a married man and so like it's kind of dope hearing it both that's a cool outlook yeah yeah yeah. so it's dope man I think uh, I don't even know if you guys this question but I'm gonna hit it <laughs> <laughs> I think a, a cool thing about myself and Sizzle as well and I, this is just like an encouraging thing just because we love we love the music and we love the dance. Yeah, yeah. You know? And so that plays a part into when we create the music. And so like we'll be in the studio and our engineer will play the track back and then we'll get up and we'll just start dancing in the studio. <laughs> Not with each other. No, no. <laughs> it's, it's doable. It's, it's I mean, doable. there's people. <laughs> uh, you know, since I learn to follow, I follow, I'll lead. I've been learning. Lead, you know? Not from RG, but Not I'm from learning. me, but he's been like, <laughs> <laughs> so just needs to come out dancing more, period. But I'm going to leave that alone. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but it, it, it's dope because it plays a part whenever we're creating because um, we're able to create not only from, like we're able to dance and be like, okay, like how would a dancer perceive this whenever they are dancing to this song? Yeah. Um, and, and so it plays a part whenever we're creating the music because we have both perspectives. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So my next question for you guys is the traveling that you guys have been able to do with Kids and Worth has been awesome to follow. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you guys have a specific favorite trip? And I'm pretty sure there's a reason behind that place being one of your favorites. Ah, dang it, I got two actually. God, dog it. I'll let you go you first. Pick one. You I'll let you go first. One. I'm trying to decide right now. I mean, honestly, I think <laughs> that question the whole time. <laughs> um, I want to say, I want to say Brazil, but that's the most recent that I've been on. But I, I try to. Uh, it's okay. You can say Brazil. I, okay, I'll say Brazil. Brazil is probably my favorite trip. Um, reason why is I feel like I learned a lot on that trip, just about the people. Um, the people were very welcoming. Um, it was very, the hospitality was like amazing there. Um, I was able to really like talk to people and bond with people and really understand not only um, Kizomba and Zouk, um in Brazil, but also learn more about the culture over there, how it is. You know, I was able to, we were able for a little while to um, go explore the streets for a little bit. And so that was, that was interesting. It was a very interesting trip because neither of us speak very well Portuguese. <laughs> so <laughs> it was Don't like- Don't get it twisted that, <laughs> that Portuguese and Spanish are the same, because they're not. Nope. And so- no, they're was, not, for sure. It was an adventure. It was, a, it was an adventure. And I think going somewhere where you can't speak the language is <laughs> really fun. And so I really like that trip. Man, uh, okay, so- I'm going to backdoor on what he said about Brazil, but then I'm going to say my favorite trip since he said Brazil because Brazil was in my top two. For sure. Um, but uh, I loved Brazil. Uh, I, I did learn a lot in Brazil. The crowd, oh my gosh, man. Like the the energy and the excitement uh, whenever we performed in Brazil, was it was nuts. I think that that was probably our livest, and by live, I mean like our craziest um, performance performance in Kizomba yeah because that that took me back to hip-hop performance yeah uh-huh. I was like oh my goodness this crowd is just feeding this they, they feeding off us we feeding off them it's just going back and forth nice. and plus being able to perform with LG was dope and being able to perform with DJ Express um, 
it was just a really really uh uh awesome trip and awesome uh, time for us to be there and perform with there. Uh, and so since he said Brazil and since that was my number two, I'll say my number one is probably uh, Montreal. Oh, man. Yeah. Montreal was one of my favorites as well. Um, just that event itself is is really, really <laughs> good. I really feel like Montreal and Canada itself is one of the most underrated oh, dance yeah. spots that for is, Kizomba. That is the number one underrated yeah, place it's, to it's, go to. It's a lot of really, really good quality Kizomba dancers out there. And and so the performances and or the, our performance <clears throat> and the energy from the people there was dope as well. We got to perform with uh, uh, Abir and Sarah Bonetto dancing while we were performed. So that was really great. Shout out to them, the homies. Uh, and so it was just I think that between we, there, there's been a, a bunch of other places as well. But when you're talking about favorites, uh, those are two of the two of the favorites that we've had. That's also awesome. you guys have gotten the opportunity to travel and kind of spread your passion and inspiration for the music to other people who may not even speak the same language that you guys do. So I'm pretty sure you guys have more travels and things like that upcoming on the horizon. And that's going to be what I like to kind of close the, the podcast with there. I want you guys to give some suspense, build some suspense with the people listening right now of why they should start to follow you of what you guys have coming up. And I'm pretty sure you guys are pretty excited about your upcoming projects last collaborations as well oh yeah yeah you want me to go yeah go ahead yeah man we're we're super super excited we're actually coming into a really crazy season because i think that back back during the last question because of all the travels and being able to connect and network and build with all these different people it's opened up a lot of doors for us to be able to look forward to really working on stuff in the future and so we do have a, a, a bunch of shows lined up coming up. You guys can go on the website and check out. Uh, if you can just go to kizombaworth.com, they'll be up on there. Um, and then as far as as far as far music, man, I don't know if I want to tell them too much, but I, I'm going to tell them, though, you know? I you got to break them off a little piece. I can break them off a little piece. Okay, so go all ahead, I'll ahead. say... It's exclusive right here, yeah. Okay, this is exclusive. <laughs> exclusive only Dance Your Heart on Fire podcast. Yes, only heard on this podcast. Because uh, I don't even think we was gonna say this until later, but we uh, we're we're releasing two oh, projects. Snap. Yeah, yeah, we're releasing two <laughs> projects in the course of three months. Um, so we're gonna release one, and then like a month and a half to two months later, we're well, gonna. We can't say what month that is. Project. But yeah, we're not gonna say what month. But it's, just know it's gonna be coming soon. We're excited about that. So that's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be an actual. And by project, I don't mean a song. We're gonna release an actual full length project and then in a, like a month and a half to two months later we're going to release a whole another full length project um and so that's one of the biggest reasons why we've been building up our vault with uh production and beats from a lot of different producers just staying in contact with and 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 working with a lot of different producers and and then obviously like, you you'll be hearing stuff from like collaborations with P. Lau again and some collaborations with, with people that we've done features with in the past as far as, I mean, as well as some features with some really, really dope artists that we're not going to say right now, but some really dope electrifying, well-known artists. You know what's real yeah. when I say electrifying. I never, I never say electrifying. Uh -huh. Like it's a wrestling, a wrestling <laughs> the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. Uh -huh. Um, but nah, like we got some really dope stuff coming up with uh, with some crazy artists that uh, that are really well known in, in Kizomba that we're really really excited about. Oh yeah, uh, and so that stuff's gonna be coming up in the future. Uh, so you definitely definitely want to follow us because we'll be posting updates not only as far as as the shows whenever we travel and and, and our day to day whenever we travel, but also with the music. We we like to do updates and, and keep people informed and updated. Um, um, uh, as we do stuff. So you definitely want to follow us. For so sure. if you have some of our listeners sitting at the edge of their seats, how is the best way to follow you guys online? Definitely check out the website, uh, KizumbaWorth.com, KizumbaWorth.com. Also, we're on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook is definitely a really good way. Uh, check out our Facebook page, Archie and Sizzle. Um, it's a really good way to get connected with us. So, I mean, we always check our messages. So if anybody ever has a question or, you know, just wants to talk or whatever, we're always there. We're always open. 
um, to communicate with you. Awesome. And I'll be sure to include all those links in the show notes for this podcast as well. So people can just have a quick, easy access to those and then I'll just search around for them. Yes, sir. Yeah, man, for sure. All right. so. Well, I appreciate all the time that you guys um, spent with us this morning for the listeners to kind of give you guys a platform to continue to kind of spread your brand and your passion and stuff like that. And also supporting the podcast. We really, really appreciate it. Also, I'll just give you guys a chance to kind of give your farewell, your vision, your encouragement, a, a piece of inspiration, whatever you guys feel is fit to kind of close out the podcast and then we'll say goodbye. Yeah. Sizzle, you go first. I go first. Uh, never give up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, never give up. Never surrender. <laughs> Oh man, oh, that was man. my first thing I could think of. Is that I what mean, you gonna say? You, I mean, that's cool. You can leave it at that. I mean, no, I was actually gonna look through my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like thinking something real deep and inspiring. To say. Yo, Charles, you can do all this in the podcast. I'm telling you. Okay, it's cool. It's cool. Oh man. Uh, um, I guess I'll go then. For me, uh, I just encourage people, like we said earlier, man, know your worth. Artists, dancers, singers, uh, know your worth. Whenever it comes to your talent, one of the most encouraging punches to the gut that that I've received recently from uh, a guy that we've worked with a really, really a lot whenever it comes to our music. um, is he said, Archie, because I used to have a really big problem whenever it came to um, getting booked for. Uh, events whenever mm-hmm. it comes to like talking about money just because I don't like to talk about money even though obviously I like money but I didn't like to talk about it you know I hear you. Uh, but he was like how you gonna talk about, how you gonna make a song about knowing your worth whenever you don't know your worth whenever it comes to getting booked for shows Boom. and I was like oh god that was a punch in the gut because we was doing a bunch of shows we, we was we was doing shows for free uh, at, at one point or for very 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 cheap and he was like man you need to stop doing that I was like man we like to take care of people and money's just rough to talk about he was like how you gonna talk about knowing your worth in a song whenever you don't know the value of your music and so I say that to say artists singers dancers know your worth and and keep running and grinding in what you're doing and don't procrastinate don't let today go by saying you're gonna do it tomorrow because then tomorrow will never come and don't let nobody stop you from doing what you gotta do be a monster it's Archie straight up dope awesome awesome guys well I appreciate you guys taking time out of the morning and I appreciate um, you guys spending time with us I'm pretty sure our listeners had a great time listening to you guys so we'll see you guys in a future episode hopefully after you guys are like super mega stars and we'll like do a (laughs) a follow up episode interview yeah man I receive it alright you guys have a good morning alright you you too brother Thank you for checking out the Dance Your Heart on Fire podcast today. Be sure to check out neokizomba.com for links to everything that we chatted about today, as well as some awesome free resources to enhance your Kizomba journey.